Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our journey with ICAT. And at today's webinar is our first lecture specifically on Indian ICAT. I personally connected with Indian textiles in 2012 when I was awarded a fellowship from Asian Cultural Council in New York. During the fellowship, I had the privilege to do a study visit in Japan, Laos, Cambodia, and in India. In India, I met several textile groups, cooperatives, and also scholars in New Delhi and in Chennai. It was a great opportunity to see Indian textile be preserved and developed, which should be a learning experience for other countries in preserving traditional textiles. At the CCDNL, the first five-year focus has been on the preservation of traditional weaving technique of ikat. We started with Indonesia and then Japan, and today we begin with India. Besides preserving the art of ikat, the CCDNL will also focus on the sustainable development of ikat for culture and economy and in particular how ICAT artisans can benefit from their crafts economically and socially for their sustainable livelihoods. As a Dutch foundation, we also like to play our role in connecting the countries that have strong history with ICAT in the past, for today and better future, and how ICAT could inspire Dutch design and creative industry for the countries involved in. We are building a platform to accommodate the effort established by CCDNL in July this year, aiming to connect artisans, to share and to learn from one another and to market their products. Our main speakers in today's webinar is Ms. Pankaja Seti, a textile designer, artist and researcher from Odisha, India featuring the Nua Patna Weaving Group. And our guest speaker is Juline Fideliers, a Dutch textile designer who has a lengthy experience working with Indian textiles. So without any further ado, I would like to invite you all to enjoy the webinar today. Thank you, Dankuel and Danewat. Hello and Namaskar. I'm Pankaja Sethi. I'm a textile designer, practicing textile artist and a researcher based out of Bhuvaneshwar in state Orissa, located in the eastern part of India. I studied textile design development at National Institute of Fashion Technology and Social Anthropology at SOAS, University of London. After graduating from textiles, I started working in Delhi in the sector of home linens primarily creating home products for European and American market. After some time, the factory-based work didn't inspire me anymore. So I decided to change my work environment. I wanted to work with local communities and local craft. I started traveling to remote villages of Odessa to meet traditional craft artisans, weavers, and also to meet tribal women to understand the craft and to meet the practicing artisans. Since 2006, I have been working with Ikat Weavers in Odessa, primarily in the area of contemporary designs, reviving indigenous methods, and creating high standard textiles. When I started working with weavers, weavers were very adamant and they didn't want to switch from tradition to contemporary design. They only wanted to weave sari. Ikat holds a special place from historical roots to the ever changing designs. As we know, the word ikat originated from the word mangikat, that means to resist or bind. In India, we don't have a particular word for ikat. Every state has a different word. Ikat is called patolu in Gujarat. Ikat is called pagri badu or chitki in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. It is called bandhu in Odessa. Bandhni, bandhna, bandhu, these are the common words associated with tying of the fabric which means to stop or act as a barrier. The basic process of ikat starts with tracing the design on a craft, 
a Bangla artist, basically translate the design from the graft to the ikat frame. He joins all the knots together into the form of design and from Bangla artist, a weaver takes the lead and he converts those designs, ikat tie-dye threads into a fabric. He joins all the dotted patterns on the loom and the fabric comes into the reality. Today's illustrated talk on the journey of Ikat textiles will briefly talk about the process, technique, the historical roots of Ikat and followed with my conversation with weavers from Oressa. Ikat resist technique can be simply defined as the process of tying and dyeing, blocking certain areas as per the desired color and design. The process may be repeated in different stages. Usually artists use threads, polythene, waste tire tubes and sometimes bark to use as resist. Nowadays the dye base in India is purely synthetic but in earlier days weavers, dyers and tie dye artists used to derive colors from natural dyes, indigo from indigo fora tinctoria, red from morenda citrifolia and rubia cordifolia, cucumber longa gives yellow color in combination with modern such as alum and marabolin. Some of the common products which is used in India are saris, lamis, dhotis and you get ikat in various textures and count, less expensive ikat and also the expensive ikat which is suitable for different markets. I think the entire process is very magical because you start with a basic graph, a simple knots, tiny knots and when you join the knots together and then you come with the beautiful ikat textiles that is the resist ikat textiles from India. Usually plain weave construction is more suitable for ikat textiles. Heirloom textiles suggest that in the Islamic world ikat velvets were also woven. This silk ikat velvet with gold border is currently in Calico Museum of Textile, Ahmedabad. Padulu is considered the most prestigious ikat textile in the world. The earliest evidence related to the production of Ikka textile in India is found in the wall paintings of Ajanta from 5th to 7th century. The low garments worn by male and female figures indicate irregular warp Ikka with plain stripe that was most enduring and widespread form of Ikka. And this type of design scheme reached beyond India to influence early textile in Middle East and Central Asia. Ikka was practiced in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Deccan in earlier days. Literary sources suggest that the origin of Ikkat in India is from Deccan that travelled to Gujarat. Simpler Ikkat in southern India and Deccan evolved with pre-existing Ikkat tradition. The Ikkat tradition also extended southeastwards to coastal Andhra Pradesh and probably to Orissa. The major geographical Ikkat producing areas in India Patan and Rajkot in Gujarat, Pochampali and Chirala in Andhra Pradesh in Telangana, Katak, Bargar, Sonpur and Bulangir in Odessa. At present, both single and double ikat is practiced by hand in India. Gujarat Patolu ikat is retained India's most prestigious and beautiful textile within India and outside India. Patolu was exported for nearly 500 years. It is the only type of ikat in the world that demands so much of precision in the planning of design that requires repeated tying and tying with meticulous accuracy to align the warp and weft threads. In Patolu, the blurring of ikat outline is not acceptable. Weavers use needle to set the threads on loom by hand for perfection. Patolu designs were made for ceremonial contexts such as draping over a bride or a bridegroom. It was worn by guest or offered to the bride as a ceremonial gift rather than being worn by her in the wedding. Patolu was particularly associated with Simant, a ritual that takes place in the seventh month of pregnancy in which auspicious pattern of Patolu is illustrated. Expectant mother bears the Patolu gifted by her husband's family. Patolu was considered pres Teachers by Hindu, Muslim and Jain communities, Patan weavers maintain that their forefathers migrated from Jalna, which is in Deccan. It is possible that Ikat travelled during the medieval period from Deccan to Patan, which was a renowned centre for weaving of other types of silk. Double Ikat was probably developed in and applied in Patan on silk. 
Salvi weavers in Jalna in later years also wove patola using pre dyed yarns. Patola was made for both export and domestic. Patola made for export was very different in texture and weave in comparison to domestic textile. Patola was made for export in different dimension, a banner like textile usually loosely woven in coarse silk and sometimes with cotton border. Among the patolas, Taran Fulbhar was often made into ceremonial and dance costume in Java, Chhabari Bhag, influenced the local ikat of lesser known Indonesian island. Indian textile became heirlooms in many villages in Indonesia. Export to Southeast Asia ceased at the outset of World War II. This is an example of pest wrapper made from patolo in Indonesia in double ikat. It was made uh, around late 19th or 20th century. Patola with blue grounds was rarely found in India but were exported to Southeast Asia. This was very popular patola design in Indonesia. Popot Kunjabhat, this is a silk double ikat with metallic threads at one end, probably made around 19th or 20th century. The pattern of elephant flowers with the parrot is considered highly tradition and valued patola. This design was made with great precision and this has been particularly associated with Brahmin communities of North Gujarat. Dakshini, which means southern, probably made in Deccan or Jalna. It is currently in National Museum, New Delhi. The body has very thin stripes with ikat palu and it was not very typical of Padam Patola. Another example of Pan Bhat Patola, which has a leaf pattern in the entire body of the sari. It has parrot, elephant and a dancing girl in the border of the sari. An example of Bora Gajibat, this type of geometrical design was favored by Ismaili Muslim merchant communities of Boras. These include triangular elements called Tumfal, which is also common to Patola made for Southeast Asia. Another example of Patolu, which has triangular elements in the entire body. This is Ratan Chok, which has jewel and square design and it was made in Patan. The geometrical and non-figurative Patola is related to Vora Gaji pattern of Muslim communities, but it was worn by merchant Hindus of central Gujarat. This patola is loosely woven, as a result of which the pattern appears to be blurred. Example of Fulbari, Fulbari Bath, which has a flower pattern in the entire body, and uh, this design was very much used in Indonesia. Another example of Fulwari Bath, which has a compartmental division, and this form of design was widely used in Indonesia. An example of Patolu Sari with standing flower in combination of yellow and blue colors. An example of Taran Fool, three flowers that was exported to Indonesia, where it was made into ceremonial and dance garment as breast wrapper. An example of Patolu silk made in Patan. Shabhari Bath. This design was used uh, in Southeast Asia very, very widely, and this design is called basket design. An example of shoulder cloth that was made especially for Southeast Asia. This type of Patola was never used in India. An example of Patola painting that appears in one of the temple and Cochin in Kerala. Probably Dutch, when they travel from Gujarat to Kerala, they gifted uh, some of the patola to the nobles and uh, eventually uh, somebody must have painted this on the wall of temple. An example of patola fabric in use as a canopy during a wedding ceremony in Sinovisi. Patola fabric in use as a canopy during a wedding ceremony in Sulawesi. Uh, the design is full body bath, which has a flower pattern in the background of the patola. This is a ceremonial cloth. The patolo of this design with four huge elephants was made only for export to Indonesia. Patolo with tigers and elephants were popular in Indonesia. These were majestic pieces were the most prestigious and the rarest. 
Another example of ceremonial cloth which has tiger and elephant. This is Golu Patolu. Uh, this is a has a plain body uh, and the ikat pattern appears in the pallu and the border. This is one of the examples of low cost sari and it was favored by Jain community. Coming to southern state Karnataka, under Tipu Sultan, uh, Karnataka experienced greater degree of Muslim influence. Today, the state supplies silk to throughout India. In Karnataka, warp based ikat was used along with the border in the body of the sari. Here, the warp uh, in the pallu area has been dyed so that pallu appears solid. Another example of warp based ikat that runs along the border of the sari. Some of the textiles from Beleri, Karnataka, and Narayan Pret in Andhra Pradesh were exported to Southeast Asia market. An example of check and stripes body in the sari along with ikat border in the warp. Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu was part of Madras presidency during British period, which includes Chola temple towns of Madurai, Tanjavur, Tiruchapalli, and Kanjibaram. In Tamil Nadu, usually weft ikats are primarily used in sarees. Uh, this textile uh, was made in Madurai around 19th century, which has weft uh, ikat and also gold thread. The gold uh, brocaded extra weft pattern appears in the pallu, and uh, to substitute the pattern, the similar pattern is created in the body of the saree using ikat rather than the gold threads. In 19th century, Ikkat was thriving in Tamil Nadu. It was abandoned with the demise of court patronage of Tanjavur, which was a crucial place for mushroom. Southern Ikkat tradition is ancient, probably one leg from Deccan, and Bandhani was introduced in Madurai by Saurashtra weavers who migrated from Gujarat to Madurai, uh, and it is called Sungri. An example of diagonal grid in ikka dotted pattern in background of the sari it was made in Madurai in 19th century. Another example of dashes of ikka dotted pattern used in the background of the sari made in Velour. A beautiful piece of uh, sari from Tanjavur and it was, was 8 yards long worn by Panjur woman in that period for temple rituals. This sari has extra warp pattern and also extra weft pattern. The ikat runs along with the extra warp design in the border. An example of uh, cotton and silk uh, fabric which was called shushi and it was uh, used for tailored garments. A simple example of lungi uh, in check pattern with weft ikat. It was worn by common people. It was made in Erod, Tamil Nadu. Uh, 20th century Andhra Pradesh in villages of Andhra Pradesh as well as further south in Tamil Nadu and west in Maharashtra fishermen and cowherds was simple ikat like pattern textile known as telia rumals or locally as chitki or chitti rumal as turbans and lungi telia rumal were originally dyed in natural colors from al sesame oil and sheep tongue was used at this process as this process of sheep down application was carried out by lower caste people, it was considered impure. So the process was carried out by lower caste people and it was woven by the weavers. It is believed that Ikat flourished in Andhra Pradesh after 19th century. Telia Roman uh, were adopted uh, by a Muslim woman of Hyderabad as dupattas and as saris by Hindu ladies. Telia Rumal was a square handkerchief with ikat pattern in combination with check. It was an important trade item during 19th century. Similar pattern were produced for the south in Madras. This Telia sari with gold embroidery decoration was used by Hyderabad Muslim woman. An example of Telia Rumal eventually, this eventually moved into figurative motif that was popular in Middle East market. The origin of pattern shows influence of Gujarati Patola, square design, Telia Romas were popular turbans in Middle East, East Africa and Southeast Asia. They were called as Asia Romal or Asia Tandal. The workful lines, aeroplanes, clock used in Telia Romas date back to 1930s. These type of designs were made for Persian Gulf. 
An example of double ikat from Andhra Pradesh made uh, in 20th century in Chirala. Mushroom textile. The origin of mushroom is associated with Muslim society. Muslim men were prohibited from wearing silk, so they developed mushroom. Mushroom is a warp free satin weave construction with silk warp and cotton weft. The glossy effect of silk remains on the surface and cotton uh, comes as the backing of the fabric that technically allows Muslim men to wear mushroom. Mushroom may or may not include ikat pattern. This is an example of mushroom fabric with metal thread and arrow headed ikat design that was made in Tekken around 18th century. An example of a mushroom ikat skirt with embroidery made in Gujarat. This colored ikat textile is similar to that was made in Turkey. The continuous chevron designs were called kanjiri from the word kanja meaning dagger. Textiles of this design were produced uh, in Tamil Nadu, Varanasi, Aurangabad and Hyderabad. In this, cotton web satin and warp ikat were used. An example of saddle cloth with ikat mushroom lining which was made in North India and uh, this has a velvet body with gold border. Odessa. The eastern state Odessa was created in 1948 mostly out of former central provinces and Madras presidency. Located on the Bay of Bengal, it has a long history of sea trade used by local Muslim and European traders. Orissa has a long history of weaving, not only in ikat, but also indigenous weaving traditions. Govinda, Khandwa Pato from Katak, Eastern Orissa, Pasapali and Vichitrapuri Sadis from Sambalpur, Western Orissa are some of the popular Orissa textile across the world. In Orissa, the art of tie and dye flourished with the patronage of local people. People of Orissa take pride in wearing Bandha sari, you can witness construction women workers, farmer's wife, and ordinary auto rickshaw fellow also wearing bandha. Odisha is the only state where most of the handloom produce is consumed locally within the state. The major geographical areas of ikat production in Odisha are Katak, Bargar, Sonpur, Bulangir, and Sambalpur. The technique of single and double ikat is practiced in western Odisha by Mahas and in eastern Odisha by Gaudiya and Asani weavers in Nuwapatna. Mahas are divided mainly into three subgroups Adivasi Kulis Mahar, Tasar Kosta Mahars, and Taidai Bhulia Mahars. They worship Vishwakarma god. Bhulia Mahars claim that their ancestor migrated from Rajasthan several generations ago. Gaudiya and Asani weavers are settled in Nuwapatna Katak district of Odisha. Some of the surname of weavers from Nuwapatna are Kotwal, Pehra, Tosh, Pal, Das, Patra and Kundu. Most of the weavers are Vaishnav devotees and some weavers are Buddhist. Burger. In Western Odessa, simple ikat designs were woven in earlier days. With time, the art of tie and dye evolved in Sambalpur, Barpali, Bulangir and Sonpur with the patronage of local people. The popularity of Odessa textile is named after Sambalpur textile.
Haqiqat of Western Orissa is different from Eastern Orissa. Tired eye artists pay attention to minute detailing. Weavers use short length warp and two sets of saris in pitloom at a time. This is one of the reasons Western Orissa textiles are finer whether it is curvilinear ikat pattern or square designs. We'll start with Dwapatna in Eastern Orissa. Nuapatna village under Tigiriya block of Katak district is home to more than 5,000 weavers. Our weavers create the most beautiful textiles from their mud houses. Most of the weavers live in small houses with poor sunlight and limited space. Weavers abode. In Odessa and many parts of India, pitlum with short warp is rolled back to utilize the space when they are not weaving. This is the ikat frame in front of Weaver's house in Nuapatna village. On the occasion of Lakshmi Puja, married woman of the house decorate her house with rice space to welcome Goddess Lakshmi, the Goddess of Wealth. This is a Weaver's house. This pattern is called Jhoti in Odia language. The Jhoti pattern often appears on Bandha textiles of Odessa. Jyoti pattern often appears on Bandha textiles of Odessa. We'll start with the conversation with Nuapatna weavers. Sikonducharan Patra, Virabarpuru, Posta Bhimanpur, Jilla Kota. Bandhukala, Dirgha, Pachasa Varsha Ho. Javarna Devunko Madala Banji Anujayi, Satarsa Unish Khishtabdaru, ए बांधकला ए आम एरिया रो नुवा पटना ठरु धरी बडंबा पर्यंत विभिन्न ग्राम रहि छि से ग्राम रे ए बांधकला कार्य चालि आछि जयदेवंगर रचित जे गीत गोविंद से गीत गोविंद रो धीर समीर जमुना तीर बसति बनमाली ए भली अनेक श्लोक को नै तागु बांधकला रे जयंत करा जाय जगन्नाथ देव बलभद्र सुभद्रा रथ यात्रा रे मध्ये ए सब बोले ए खंडवा वस्त्र जा कहा जाय से गीत गोविंद पिंधंती माने बांध कार्य रे विभिन्न जीव जंतु हरिण सिंह बाघ विभिन्न प्रकार फूल ए भले कि जे प्रकार डिजाइन हेले से बांध काम रे करि आछु आ ता पर भी हम एरिया रे अनेक माने टसर काम पाट काम कॉटन काम दिर्घ दिन होला करे आसु छु तंत काम एमति कि एक्सपोर्ट काम जोडा के विभिन्न एक्सपोर्ट माध्यम रे काम करे आसि छि धरन को एक्सपोर्ट कहले से सासा एक्सपोर्ट हो दस्तकार हो एमति अनेक अंक सहित जडित आगु रहि छि एबे भी कार्य चालू रहि छि विभिन्न प्रकार अनुष्ठान मान को ता परे 2010 रे Rahichi, से खदिर भी नेशनल अवार्ड मिली छि ए भुले बांध कार्य अत्यंत कम बहुत खीण होबारे लागिलानी कारीगर माने बांध काम बा सुता काम वस्त्र काम छाडी विभिन्न मूल्या मजूर करबा को जाउ छथि मु मोर जो पारंपरिक हिसारे बापा गठन देखि पाठ पढा छाडीबा परे अल्प पाठ पढी के छाडलि त तें पाठ पढा परे से बांध कला तंत्रणा कार्य रे केतक असुविधा देखा दे उची जहा फल रे की जेहेतु उचित मूल्य जने पाई पारु नाही ता पर जनरेशन रे देखा जाउ छी बाहरे जनरल भाबरे जे लोको भी पसंद करना दे कार्य कोनो ना जदी साधारण कथा कहे कोले गोटे पुत्र पैन जदी कन्या दे खोजा जाउ छी से पचाउ छी की चाकरी कर छी ना तंत कार्य व्यवसाय कर छी तंत गुण छी ना 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 तो तो हमारे मजूर नहीं तार भविष्य तो नहीं क्यों ये पे वर्तमान कौन हो चुकी ना कोरोना समय रे जो मार्च बाईस तारु आमरो ये अंचल रे कोरोना का प्रभाव पड़ी ला ताप वाले आस्ते आस्ते शटडाउन लॉकडाउन ये हवा द्वारा रॉ मटेरियल ठीक रे आशी पल लानी उत्पादित वस्त्र बिक्री है पल लानी 
सब समिति माने मध्य से भी चलिव अवस्था रे नाहंती तेनु केछि केछि गुणाकार मध्य दादन करबा को बॉम्बे पुना ए भले विभिन्न जगह को भी जाउ छंती आ सरकार को सहायता जहां आसुची से विभिन्न बाटे रे आजकल तो ठीक समय रे आ ठीक लोक पाखर भी पहुंच पारु नाही साता आठ मास हला तंत कर जाओ माने बिक्री बटा बंद हो जाई छी जहां फल रे कि गुणाकार मान बहुत दिन रे रह छंती से आमे जहां काम करथिलु से धरम तो भुवनेश्वर से अनेशा हां तार मध्य जिनस बिक्री न होवा द्वारा से भी कार्य ठीक रे देई पारु नाहंदी आ कोनोसी दुकान खुला हालानी किंतु दुकान रे लोको नाही बिक्री जहां हम किंतु आमर कारीगर मो पाखरे 40 वर्ष धरी कार्य करे आसु छन तांको ठीक समय रे कार्य देबा एवं उचित मजदूर देई दिवारु एबे भी सुधा चालू रही छि यार परे धरन मोर बापा परंपरा कार्य करथिले मु भी करथिली किंतु मोर परे जे पिला आसीले से माने आउ ए तंतगुणा कार्य करबा को इच्छा प्रकाश करना जेहेतु तांकर उचित मजदूर पाइ पारु नाहंदी भली अवस्था रे जहा की धरम मोर निज पाठ पढिबा परे से दिल्ली ये रे निफ्टी रे हां डिजाइनर पाठ पढि सल्ला परे से भी चाकरी जाकी बाहर करी छी लाइफस्टाइल रे करी छी से एति प्रति आग्रह प्रकाश कर रहा जे जेहेतु एथिरे बहुत परिश्रम किंतु कम मजदूर हम देखा जाउ छी जे ए कार्य करे केते दिन आउ कष्ट स्वीकार करबा ए कला बंची रहबा कोइले जे कोनोसी सरकारी इनकर प्रोत्साहन किबा विभिन्न अनुष्ठानर प्रोत्साहन दे यदि कला को बंची रखा जाय कोइ त बंची रही पर संभावना अछि एटा उडिया जो एटा ओटे देइ दिले मान छोडा जाय मोळी सेटा को जो बुला जाय ता को डिजाइन करिया पय जो बुल्ला कि ना जोडी कि सब दिया जाय सेटा को आगो स्टार्टिंग रो आरंभ करलु सेटा आरंभ करिके से थ्रू सब सिकी गला जानी गला परे से डिजाइन हे आसला परे से जो काठी नळी एडा को सिंपल भावे हम कर पाइलु एडा कर सला परे से डिजाइन हेरा सब धरिलु बा बा पड़ते ता परे जानी गला परे सब बुनिलु तापरे से टू स्टार्टिंग हे कि आज कि 25 वर्ष लई हमर गाछी काम चलछे आ एबे जो आपना संत बुनो छंती निज झियो को पढौ छंती सान पुओ को पढौ छंती आपन को मन रे केमिति आसले ताको पढिया कथा पढिया बता एदि नै कि जे पाठ न पढी हम बहुत दुख छि बर बैलु तापरे पढिया पई निज एई एई काम रु तंत गुनी कि निज रोजगार रु बिसुदा ताको सहायता करी काम रे निज पिला को पढिया रखे हम दबे हम एई सुविधा रु पाई तेनु करी निज से तेले कामटा करलु हमर किछटा आसिला स्वाभिमान आसिला एकर अधिकार भी आसिला रोजगार आउ टिक्के बढेई कि ना जेहेतु हम कामडा करलु हम पाखर किछ रोजगार बाला हम जानले भी बढेई पाइलु तेन कर से हम कथा रे भी हम ये रे भी पिला बाई बंद पढेई पाइलु ताले आपनो संतुष्ट अछंती संतुष्ट अछि ठीक अछि ओ थैंक यू थैंक यू Significant role in the making of Ikka textiles. Mm -hmm. Women contribute in the opening of Ikka textiles. Mm -hmm. Women contribute in the opening of yarn, cleaning of the clothes, mm -hmm. spinning, mm -hmm. sewing, filling of the bobbins, mm -hmm. and stitching. Mm -hmm. the warp, mm -hmm. the warp, mm -hmm. and weaving. Women contribute in the making of Ikka textiles. 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 Women contribute in the making of 
ଯେତେବେଳେ ତନ୍ତ ବୁଣିବା ଆରମ୍ଭ ହେଲା ଘରେ ବାପାଙ୍କ ସାଥିରେ ତନ୍ତ ବୁଣିବା ଆରମ୍ଭ ହେଲା ସେତେବେଳେ ବହୁତ କଷ୍ଟ ଲାଗେ ଆଉ ଯେତେବେଳେ ଫାଇନାଲ୍ ଜଣା ପଡ଼ିଲା କି ମୁଁ ଆଉ ପଢ଼ିପାରିବିନି ତା'ପରେ ମୋ ପାଖରେ ଥିବା ଯେତିକି ପୁରୁଣା ବହି ଖାତା ଥିଲା ସେଇଟା ଦିନେ ବିକ୍ରି କରିଦେବି ଆଉ ଫୋପାଡ଼ି ଦେବା ଉଦ୍ଦେଶ୍ୟରେ ଯେତେବେଳେ ତାକୁ ଖୋଜୁଥିଲି ହଠାତ୍ ଦେଖିଲି ଗୋଟେ ଜାଗାରେ ଦୁଃଖ ବି ଲାଗୁଥାଏ ଚିନ୍ତା କଲୁ କି ଆଉ କ'ଣ ଟିକେ କଲେ ବେଶୀ ଟିକେ ମଜୁରୀ ମିଳିବ ଗୋଜେସ୍ଟା ବଢ଼ିବା ପାଇଁକି ଆମେ ଟିକେ ଟେକ୍ନିକ୍ ୟୁଜ୍ କଲୁ ଆସ୍ତେ ଆସ୍ତେ ସେଇ ଯେଉଁ ଗ୍ରାଫ୍ରେ ଆମେ ପାଠ ପଢ଼ୁଥିଲୁ ସେଇ ଗ୍ରାଫ୍ ୟୁଜ୍ କରିକି ଆମେ ଜାଲା ଆଉ ବମିକିର ଡେଭଲପମେଣ୍ଟ ଷ୍ଟାର୍ଟ କଲୁ ଆଉ ସେ ଜାଲା ବମିକିର ଡେଭଲପମେଣ୍ଟ ଷ୍ଟାର୍ଟ କଲା ପରେ ପରେ ଲୋକଙ୍କ ପାଖରେ ଆମର ଟିକେ ଶାଢ଼ୀଟା ବେଶୀ ଆଦୃତି ହେଲା ତା'ପରେ ଲୋକମାନେ ଆମକୁ ଯେତେବେଳେ ପ୍ରଶଂସା କଲେ ହଁ ଭଲ ଶାଢ଼ୀ ବୁଣୁଛନ୍ତି ତ ତା'ପରଠୁ ଆମେ ଆଉ ପଛକୁ ଫେରିନୁ ଆଉ ସେଇ ଦିନଠୁ ମୁଁ ନୂଆ ନୂଆ କରିବାର ଇଚ୍ଛା ପ୍ରକାଶ ପାଇଲା ଆଉ ଆସ୍ତେ ଆସ୍ତେ ଟାଇ ଡାଇ ନ୍ୟାଚୁରାଲ୍ ଡାଏ ଆଉ ଅନ୍ୟାନ୍ୟ ନୂଆ ନୂଆ ୟାର୍ନରେ ନୂଆ ନୂଆ ଷ୍ଟାଇଲ୍ର ବାନ୍ଧ ଆଉ ଅଲଗା ଅଲଗା ଷ୍ଟାଇଲ୍ର ନୂଆ ନୂଆ ଡିଜାଇନ୍ ତିଆରି କରିବା ପାଇଁକି ଆଗ୍ରହ ପ୍ରକାଶ ପାଇଲା ଆଉ ତେବେଠୁ ନୂଆ ନୂଆ କରିବାର ଇଚ୍ଛା ହିଁ ରହିଛି ଆଉ ଏବେ ସୁଧା ବି ନୂଆ କରାଯାଉଛି ବାନ୍ଧ କାମ ଶିଖିବାରେ ମୁଁ ଆଗ ଫାଷ୍ଟ କ'ଣ କରୁଥିଲି ଆଗ ଟିକେ ଗାଁରେ ମାନେ ଯାଇକି ଟିକେ ଶିଖଉଥିଲି ଆଉ ଆମ ଶିବ ଭାଇ ଜଣେ ଥିଲେ ଆଉ ସେ ଟିକେ ଶିଖଉଥିଲେ ଜଷ୍ଟ ସେଠୁ ବାହାରେ ମୁଁ ହେମିତି ମାନେ କିଛି ଶିଖିନଥିଲି ସେଠୁ ଅର୍ଜୁନ ଭାଇଙ୍କ ପାଖକୁ ଗଲି ଆଉ ସେଠୁ ଗଲା ପରେ ମୁଁ ମାନେ କିଛି ଜାଣିନଥିଲି ମାନେ କାମ ବିଷୟରେ ସେଠୁ ଭାଇ ଆମର ଅର୍ଜୁନ ଭାଇ ଆମର କହିଲେ କି କହିଲେ ତୁ କର ଯାହା ହେଉଛି ମୁଁ ଏଠୁ କାମ କରା ଆରମ୍ଭ କଲି ଆଉ ତା'ପରେ କଲା ପରେ ଆସ୍ତେ ଆସ୍ତେ କହିଲା ପରେ ମାନେ ମୁଁ କରିଚାଲିଲି ରାତି ବାହାର ଗୋଟେ ବି କରିଛି କାମ Yashodra Patra, wife of Sarat Patra, has been working very hard more than 25 years on Ikat, making exclusive Ikat textile. One of the beautiful craftsmanship of Ikat is here. This is the Kandarpa style of Ikat in natural dyes. And uh, I would like to ask him a few questions uh, regarding his journey into the textile. Hi, Namaskar. I'm Mohauchi Jana Bunankara. ମୋ ଘର ହେଉଛି ତିକିରିଆ ଥାନା ଅଞ୍ଚଳ ନୂଆପାଟଣା ଗ୍ରାମ କଟକ ଜିଲ୍ଲା ମୁଁ ଉଣେଇଶହ ତେୟାନବେ ମସିହାରେ ଜଗନ୍ନାଥଙ୍କର ଗୀତ ଗୋବିନ୍ଦ ଦଶ ଅବତାର ୱାଲାଙ୍ଗି ଚାନ୍ଦୁଆରେ ନ୍ୟାସନାଲ୍ ଆୱାର୍ଡ଼ ପାଇଥିଲି ତା'ପରେ ମୋର କାମ ଏମିତି ଚାଲି ରହିଛି ଆଉ ଦୁଇ ହଜାର ପନ୍ଦର ମସିହାରେ ବୁଦ୍ଧଙ୍କର ଜାତକ କଥା ଯେଉଁ ବୁଦ୍ଧଙ୍କର ଜୀବନୀ ଉପରେ ଗୋଟେ ୱାଲାଙ୍ଗି କରିକି ସେଥିରେ ସନ୍ତ କବିରି ଆୱାର୍ଡ଼ ପାଇଥିଲି ଇଏ ଯେଉଁ ଆମର ବାନ୍ଧ କଳା ଇଏ ହେଉଛି କୌଳିକ ବୃତ୍ତି ଆମର ଇଏ ପରମ୍ପରା ଅନୁସାରେ ଚାଲି ରହିଛି ମୋ ଜାଣିବାରେ ଜୟଦେବଙ୍କ ଯେଉଁ ପୂର୍ବରୁ ଆମର ଏଇ ବାନ୍ଧ କଳା ଆମ ନୂଆପଟଣା ଗ୍ରାମ ଗାଁ ଗ୍ରାମରେ ହେଉଥିଲା ତା ପରଠାରୁ ଆମ ନୂଆପଟଣା ଗ୍ରାମରେ ଏଇ ପିଢ଼ି ଅନୁସାରେ ଚାଲିଛି ଗୀତ ଗୋବିନ୍ଦ ଖଣ୍ଡୁଆ ପାଟ ଜଗନ୍ନାଥଙ୍କ ଠି ଅର୍ପଣ କରାଯାଉଛି ଅଙ୍ଗବସ୍ତ୍ର ଭାବେ ଲାଗୁ ହେଉଛି ଗୀତ ଗୋବିନ୍ଦ ଏମିତି ଗୋଟେ କାବ୍ୟ ଯେଉଁଟାକି ରାଧାକୃଷ୍ଣଙ୍କର ଭକ୍ତ ଆଉ ଭଗବାନଙ୍କର ଯେମିତି ଇଏ ସେଇ ଭଳିଆ ଆଦାନ ପ୍ରଦାନ ଆଉ ଗୀତ ତାରି ଉପରେ ଗୀତ ଗୋବିନ୍ଦ କାବ୍ୟଟାକୁ ମୁଁ ଲେଖିକି ସାରିଛି ସାତ ବର୍ଷ ଲାଗିଲା ଆଉ ନ୍ୟାଚୁରାଲ୍ କଲର୍ ଉପରେ 
पूरा गीत गोविंद काव्यटी लिखाई बावन मीटर लंबा नौश लाइन नैचुरल कलर रे है जो खंडुआ शाढ़ी कहुचे खंडुआ शाढ़ी हूँ शाढ़ी मान नारी नारी रूप को वर्णना रही जोटा कि खंडुआ पाट से आम पाद को वर्णना कर पद्म फल दे मुख को वर्णना कर सूर्यमुखी फल दे कि जोटा गज गमन चाली से चालीटा को आम से हाथी गोटे चित्र दि जा सिंह कटी से सिंह रोटे चित्र दि जा कोकिलकंठी जोटा कोईली स्वर से कोईली गोटे चित्र दि जा देहरे आम मृग नयन मीन नयन मृग मिरीग रोटे चित्र दि जा इमें सब विभिन्न प्रकार वर्णना रही जोटा कि नृसिंह रूप होता है सिंह चित्र दि जा विभिन्न प्रकार भक्त भगवान जो संपर्क से अनुसार आम शाढ़ी वर्णना रही खंडुआ पाट जो गीत गोविंद खंडुआ पाट से आम कौन हो जगन्नाथ पाखे जो पार्श्व देवता मैंने अच्छा जगन्नाथ बलभद्र सुभद्रा तादेवी हृदयवी एम सब जो पार्श्व देवता अच्छा समस्त ये लागू कर विभिन्न पार्ट मान खंड खंड कर श्लोक रो दि लाइन चार लाइन एम जी दरकार से अनुसार जो खंड खंड कर खंडुआ पाट मैं खंडुआ पाटर विभिन्न प्रकार वर्णना अच्छे आम एवं जो शाढ़ी कम कर बापा गुट कम शिखी से अनुसार धरतु आम विभिन्न कव्य कविता रही जमी उपेन्द्र भंज आम भीम भई कालीदास गोटे काम आरंभ हम जो मेघदूत कव्य पर सब विभिन्न कव्य कविता को लेकिन मुझे कम चल जोटा कि से कव्य मध्यम रहा साथी आम नारी रूप वर्णना रही थी किसी आम प्राकृतिक वर्णना रही थी प्रकृति ये नहीं कि से अनुसार शाढ़ीटा को जमी आम या जोटा कि पिंधा उपयोगी हम लोक मैंने भी ग्रहण करेंगे से अनुसार विभिन्न चित्र को लेकिन आम कर लता लतार चित्र दि जा जोटा कि डाई आम विभिन्न प्रकार फुल डाई ये सब दि जा प्राकृतिक ये को लेकिन सब कथा आम शाढ़ी मान प्राकृतिक ये चित्र जमी प्रकृति रू आस डिजाइन धरत तो तारा बड़ी आकाश और तारा मान जमी पुंजी पुंजी हो रही से अनुसार कर नक्षत्र भाई शाढ़ी ये अनुसार आम सब प्रकृति की नहीं कि डिजाइन कर आम एम मन इच्छा गोटे डिजाइन करके करदे से खंडुआ पाटर वर्णना नुह से आम प्रकृति ये को लेकिन प्राकृतिक चित्र एवं प्राकृतिक रंग आम व्यवहार करोटा मुझे पचास प्रकार रंग भी मानने प्रकृति रू बाहर करी विभिन्न प्रकार परीक्षा निरीक्षा कर धरतु आम नारी वर्णना पर भी से दिवर आसू कव्य अनुसार एवं कम चालू रही सब आम विभिन्न कव्य कविता केमी आम कपड़े व्यवहार करवा से अनुसार चली आमर ओडार कवि सम्राट उपेन्द्र भंज तर वैदेश विलास कव्य रु गोटे शाढ़ी करेखा उपर शाढ़ी तापर आम काम सूत्र उपर जो आम कोकशास्त्र से गोटे शाढ़ी आमर अंबिका विलास जोटा कि कवि होंगे बलभद्र वंज देवं अंबिका विलास कव्य दिवर से बाहर रोरी नहीं कि गोटे शाढ़ी इनके विभिन्न सब प्रकार शाढ़ी आम बनाऊ को पारंपरिक कला कौलिक वृत्ति आम कौलिक मान जीवन जापन से भरण पोषण कर
We saw the journey of Indian Ikat textile from its historical roots to present contemporary design. The popularity of Indian Ikat textiles traveled to Central Asia, Southeast Asia, Africa, and in fact to Europe. At present, you saw the ikat of each state from Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and Orissa, and you saw how ikat from each state has its own characteristic. My ethnographic study is Orissa. Orissa shares a long maritime trade with Indonesia. Based on the maritime trade between Orissa and Southeast Asia, trade to Java, Sumatra, and Bali, textiles of Tengana and folklore of Orissa and Java show several similarities. I had visited Bali and Java in 2011 to study Ika textile and also look at the similarity between Orissa and Indonesia and it was really really fascinating to meet the weavers and to see reflection of Orissa in Indonesia. Recently during the lockdown as a result of pandemic in last six months more than 100,000 weavers were affected. The supply chain was disrupted, weavers did not have threads to weave, looms became idle. Weavers had nothing in hand to run their family. The situation became worse and worse. Material remained unsold for many, many months. Even after the lockdown, the situation hasn't improved. Local cooperatives, self-help group society, they still have unsold amount of stock lying with them. Currently, there is a lot of crisis in the market. Weavers do not have much order. Weavers are looking for commission orders, looking for collaboration in order to sustain their legacy, in order to sustain their family. I hope you enjoyed the talk. I would like to thank Dr. Yeti and Center for Culture and Development Netherlands and the entire team of Center for Culture and Development for giving me the opportunity to talk on Ikat Textiles of India. Thank you. Your main responsibilities as a social designer. Um, I think as a social designer, I need to reckon with the fact that there's a social uh, question uh, and it's often related to production and there's a market and production and market need to be linked to be able to have impact. And as a social designer, I think I am responsible to make that link between production and market. Okay, I was more about your work with craftspeople in India and how did you become interested in Indian textiles? Yeah, of, of course, as a textile designer, I was already interested in Indian textiles because it's, uh, I think, maybe the country with the biggest textile uh, tradition. And I met an Indian woman in uh, Maastricht where I was working at the time. And she invited me to come over to India. And actually, I thought, I'm going to do it. Why not? So it was more like an adventure. And um, the people I met over there, they introduced me to their network. So I visited quite some craft groups and I selected a few to start working with. So my intention was to translate their tradition, their textile tradition through contemporary design and open up their work uh, to new markets. So how I work is that I travel to India to visit the craft group. I study their tradition and I explore what materials do they have, what equipment do they have, um, how are they used to work and what can I possibly innovate? And then with that information, I take it all back to the Netherlands. And here I, I start designing around what, what I, uh, the information I gathered in India. And then I send my designs and they uh, work on it. And then I receive some prototypes. Sometimes I go back to, to work with the craftspeople again on, on optimizing the, the product. And sometimes when I'm a bit used to the group already, I work from here. And uh, so by the time I hold the product in my hands, I have already a few weeks and months of uh, development time together with the craftspeople. Okay. That was interesting. Uh, did you encounter any challenges without your work in India? Yes, many challenges. <laughs> Of course, there's the, there's the cultural difference, there's the difference in language. Uh, I think cu cultural difference is the, the biggest one because of course, in the work uh, and in the daily life of people, culture is, is so ingrained and so, yeah, it, it defines 
nearly everything, how people make their choices, what um, it, it defines their ambition, it defines what they think they need in life. So as a social designer, you need to have a, a, um, like an understanding of what those people need, what they want. It's not about what I want to, to, to give to them, it's what they need. And then it's up to me to, to work around that and to create the, the correct atmosphere mm -hmm. to provide that. And that was a challenge to, to understand the, the different cultures. It was also a challenge in practical um, work to get the quality uh, optimized for international markets because domestic markets in India, they have different uh, requirements when it comes to quality, but also to uh, optimization of the production chain. Um, often orders in India are one-offs and uh, to go abroad, we need to, to, to be able to, to give them repeat orders. So once they've made something in one color, two years later, I have to be able to order the exact same color that needs um, uh, organize, organization. So that is also setting that up. Yeah, many challenges actually. Uh, do, you have, do you have commercial partners? Uh, do you work together on market opportunities? Yes, I think it's very important to have commercial partners. Uh, when I started, actually, I had no partners. Uh, so I was just exploring the potential of this kind of work, like the, um, the crafts translated to contemporary design, um, handmade goods for international markets. So I took some years to explore that. And uh, five years ago, 2014, 15, I met um, my commercial partners, which I still work with today. And uh, now, after 10 years of, of working with India and five years of working with commercial partners, I have found um, like a structure that, that suits me, suits my partners, and also the, the Indian producers and the commercial um, network, which is globally. So we both, the commercial partner and myself, we both constantly keep an eye on the market and market opportunities and um, and same for the production network. Mm -hmm. Your approach to textile is so successful. I think that what worked well in India is that um, I approach their tradition with a lot of respect. And at the same time, I'm not afraid to, to innovate. So I really explore what their tradition is, uh, the skills that they have, the materials they have av available, the equipment they have available. And from there, I design something new. So I, tr I translate uh, by design. And then I challenge them to, within the boundaries of what I know is possible, I challenge them to, to innovate their technique. And I think there, in the combination of cherishing the tradition and embracing the innovation, uh, I think there is the success. How did you integrate Indian textile heritage into the international market? Indian textile. Well, I, I think the, the Indian textile heritage is, is huge. There's so much to, to work with. And as a designer, I think it's your responsibility to, to know the markets you want to introduce those uh, uh, textiles to. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if I answered uh, the question correctly. No, it's not. So what accomplishments do you feel set your part in this textile industry? I think what, what sets me apart in, in, in the industry is that I reckon with all three pillars that from my opinion are needed to, to make this work successful. And these are production, design and marketing. So you cannot be successful if you only work on production and design. You can also not be successful if you only work on design and marketing. You need three pillars, production, design, marketing, and all three pillars need to, to be strong and need to have the right people in the right place. 
and all three pillars need to to be worked on and when when those are balanced then i think you have a really strong product with good market opportunities that can be made in a fair way uh, by by the artisans okay so the core of our project is the intricate technique of indian cut uh, did you hear about it during your work with indian artisans Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with, uh, with the technique and I visited also quite some groups uh, that work with ECAT. I think it's a beautiful technique with beautiful opportunities for, for these contemporary markets that we are now talking about. Um, if, if a designer wants to work with ECAT, I would advise to, to really go into the technique and study what's so unique about the technique and um, use that specific something that specific something for ecot make that the the core of your design work around that always work from uh, the uniqueness of of the the technique of that specific tradition mm -hmm. i think there are great opportunities for ecot in worldwide markets uh, and how can traditions and innovation bring the dutch design and indian textile heritage together and could you apply here shape-shifting heritage? Yes, I think what, what um, the biggest asset of India is the textile heritage. Uh, many people have beautifully skilled hands to make textiles. And they, in India, when, when you walk in India, so many women are still wearing saris. So Indian people really respect their traditions they they their daily life is full with tradition in the netherlands it's far less but what, what we are strong with is um, conceptual design so we tend to zoom out we don't work with our hands on on the details we tend to zoom out and look at the bigger picture and i think in india when they're very much into the detail and the beautiful skill of handwork in the netherlands we are zoomed out and we can look at the bigger picture what is the market who are the buyers you know and i think these these two worlds when they blend something special can happen um, and what advice would you give our organization to enhance future possibilities for indian cut I think again the three pillars are crucial. Mm -hmm. I think it's great to inspire designers to work with Indian craftspeople or craftspeople wherever in the world. Um, and I think at the same time, when you uh, emphasize on, on craft, on production, on handwork, you also need to emphasize on marketing and sales because else you can develop beautiful things and they will never find their way into the market. And that's a pity. Mm -hmm. So Again, I come back to the three pillars, production, design, and marketing, and to find a beautiful balance between those three to make sure that the beautiful products you create can also be sold, because then you come to a sustainable something. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, I'm Julita Utoyo, Supervisor from CCDNL. I hope you all enjoy and are inspired by our webinar today about Indian ICAT. Today's event aims to connect and build a strong relationship between Indian ICAT artisans with that designer through the knowledge sharing and we hope it will be able to preserve the traditional ICAT weaving in India and also supporting and encouraging Indian ICAT artisans in keeping their traditional heritage. CCDNL will continue this webinar series in the future and the webinar session will be broken down into a smaller event such as lecturers, Zoom lessons that held a direct and close communications, discussions between Indian artisans and Dutch designer in continuous program of sharing knowledge. Through the CCDNL fundraising campaign, we also invite you to give your donation that will be used in supporting artisans in buying yarns and their process in creating and preserving ikat in India and also for a better income. So please visit our social media and an online platform for further information about our activities and the funding possibilities available in gift.com. 
On behalf of CCDNL, I would like to thank everyone who participated today in this webinar. Special thanks to our speakers, Ms. Pankaja Sethi, who lead the first webinar of Indian Ikan. Thank you very much for a group of artisans, Nua Pata Odisha from India. Thank you very much to our CCDNL director, Ms. Yeti van de Madehening, for this event. Thank you very much for Ms. Jolene Fielders, who already shared her experience and engagement with textile heritage in India. Thank you very much to all CCDNL team, our volunteers, our interns for all the hard work and support in preparing this event. We will continue this event with a Zoom meeting now, so please join. We will have a discussion with our speakers, questions and answers, and networking. The Zoom link is available in our social media and in this chat. So thank you once again and see you soon.